Hi there, my name is Vince from Mr. Telephone and today I'm going to show you how to make a VDSL lead. These are the leads if you have super fast broadband such as BT Infinity. Okay, now, it will only work if you don't have the microfilters, okay, because the VDSL lead has an RJ45 on one end and an RJ11 stroke RJ12 on the other end. So uh, this microfilter will only fit the RJ11. So if, you, you, if you're using microfilters for your service, do not make this lead or do not buy one of these leads from me as it won't work. You will have to have one of these master sockets here with either the VDSL faceplate on it, it may have OpenReach written on it, it may have OpenReach Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 3 written on it, but basically you will have to have a VDSL faceplate or one of the older style ADSL faceplates because these ADSL faceplates will accept an RJ11R or an RJ45 and this VDSL lead will be made with an RJ45 on one end. So make sure you've got either one of these on your master socket or one of these if you're going to buy or make this lead. Now, so the cable I'm using is Cat6 cable. This particular cable, it's really nice stuff. It's XL stuff. It's, uh, it's low smoke. It's, it's, it's got a nice, uh, nice thick sheath, pure copper. It is 23 AWG, that's American wire gauge, so it's, uh, it's nice thick wires. Now, uh, you can also make these leads out of Cat5e. The reason I'm doing this video on Cat6 is because it's harder to make it out of Cat6. If you're going to make it out of Cat5e, it's a lot easier because getting the ends, the, the, the RJ45 is no problem, but when it comes to the RJ12 ends, it's hard to get it into the Cat6. So the, I'm showing you with Cat6 because then if you do make it out of Cat5e, you're gonna find it even easier. So I'm showing you the harder of the two. So what you have to do is, these are the things you need. You need one rubber boots, you're gonna need one Cat6 plug, and one RJ12 plugs. I've done videos on plugs already, so I'm just gonna quickly show you the difference on the plugs just in case you haven't seen the other videos, but if you want more inf info about the sizes and stuff, please watch my other YouTube, YouTube video on RJ10, RJ11, RJ12, RJ45 plugs so you have a good idea. Now, on the uh, RJ45 plugs, you're gonna need to use a Cat6 version, not a Cat5e version. Cat5e, if you can look closely, the Cat5e, all the wires are straight, all the holes are straight going across, while the Cat6, are staggered, so it's one low, one high, one low, one high, one low, one high, and so on, while on the Cat5e they're all straight. I don't know if the camera can pick that up. So this one here is the Cat5e, and this one here is the Cat6. So uh, if you're making a Cat5e cable, go ahead and use Cat5e, but because we're making a Cat6 cable, use the Cat6, yeah? Now, on the other side, the RJ12 side, or RJ11, they're both the same size. The difference between RJ11 and RJ12 is the number of contacts. RJ11 has four contacts, RJ12 has six contacts. Now, on this lead, we're only making, only connecting four wires, so you would think that the RJ11 would be fine. The RJ11 is fine on Cat5e because the Cat5e cable is smaller, but if you're using a Cat6 cable, which we are for this video, you have to use the RJ12, which is this one here, this one over this side here. Because again, if you look at the entry, if you've seen my other videos, this is gonna be boring you now, but if you look at the entry, the entry hole here is bigger than the Cat5e entry hole. So for Cat6 cable, you're gonna to have to use an RJ12. A lot of people, especially on eBay, call RJ11 and RJ12 the same thing, but they're not because they're different pins. So basically the RJ12 is 6P6C. So if you look at my eBay shop, you will see RJ12s for sale and RJ11. So if you're using Cat6, make sure you use the RJ12. So let me just get rid of the Cat5e ones, because I just had them there as an example. So we've got the Cat6, RJ45, and the RJ12. So here we go, I'm gonna show you how to make it. Slide your white rubber boot on, okay? If it doesn't go on, you can you know, just slightly wet it and then it will go on easier. The thicker the cable, the harder it's gonna to be to get the cable on. So, I'm using a cable stripper. You don't have to use a stripper. You can use, your crimpers always have a little cutout here. On this one here, they have a, a cutout as well on the, on the ends here to do your cables. But, so you can use that and spin it round, but I'm just gonna use this because I've already set it up already. 
Now what you want to do is you, when you're spinning it, you want to make sure you don't damage the wires on the inside. So don't cut it in too much because there's a chance you could score the wires on the inside. I know I haven't done that because if you watch and listen, can you see that that's, I don't know if you heard it like click, but there you go. You can see that the sheath has nicely snapped away. Yeah. Now we're going to be using the orange and the blue pairs. So basically when you're cutting back, make sure that you don't score the inside cables. Some cables have a drawstring that you can pull back. Whatever you do, you just need to have a nice straight line on your white sheath. Not so important for the RJ45 side because there's plenty of room to push the sheath in, but very important when you come to the, the RJ12 side because there's very little room. So what we do is on the RJ12 side, uh, RJ45, the bigger side, we can just cut all this away in one go. So we're just using the orange and the blue pair. Cut that away. Now on these VDSL cables, they do just use one pair, but I'm connecting up two, just, uh, just, just feels ever so slightly stronger to just have more wires in the cable. But if you really want, you can just connect up the blue to the middle two pairs, yeah, sorry, middle two wires. But uh, it's probably just as easy to just copy me what you're doing on this video, just copy like for like. So that's how I'm going to be connecting them up. It's going to be white orange this side, blue, the white blue, and then the orange. And they're going to be going on the middle four pins. So that's going to be uh, pins. So one and two are going to, because this is an eight piece connector. This is an 8P, 8C. So this has got uh, eight contacts in, but we're only using the middle four. So pins one and two are going to be empty and pins seven and eight are going to be empty. So basically the pins that are going to be full are three, four, five, and six, yeah? So, uh, so white orange is going to go into pin three, blue is going into pin four, white blue is going into pin five, and orange is going into pin six. So what we're doing this side is getting your cutters here with these bits here. Make sure you get a nice straight cut approximately that much you can measure it against the the sheaf ends here and can you see there that was a pretty good guess the sheaf ends there on this bit here and you can see that the wires are going to be touching the top if you're unsure which you're going to be if you're just making this for the first time go longer push it in and if the sheaf doesn't go all the way to the end take it out snip a little bit more snip another millimeter off until you get to the right length obviously i make quite a lot of these so uh, i know the length to push them to, cut them to. So now we're going to push them in. Now, it can be fiddly getting them in because it's uh, not only is the sheath quite big, but also you have got to get it into the right the right hole. So you might mess it up a few times. You might end up going in holes two, three, four, and seven, you know, so just keep doing it until you get it right. Push the sheath right the way to the very end. So if you look closely now, the sheath's gone to the very end of this, uh, very end of the where the sheath can go in the RJ45 plug. And if you look at the ends there, I mean, I haven't crimped it yet, but if you look at the ends, can you see the copper wires have gone right the way to the very, very ends? Make sure those copper wires are pushed to the very end because then the pins will fully, because the little pins have two contacts, two little prongs on each one. You want both the prongs to be indicate in the wire to give it a nice, good, uh, good contact. So I know that's fully in. And again, you, uh, if you look from the top, you'll see that we're in the middle four, the middle four connections. Yeah, so that's that. Crimp it down. Okay, that's on now. Let's slide your boot back on. Now, with this boot, you can slide it all the way on, but what you'll sometimes find is that it might foul when you're pushing it in here. Can you see there it's not clicking in because the boot is too uh, is a little bit too big. So just slide the boot back a little bit until it's just barely covering that little, so the, snaggler, the snaggless bit. So obviously if you're pulling it through a load of cables, this is called a snaggless because it doesn't snag on the little retaining clip. If you pull it back a little bit, then you will see that, can you see it clips into place? Yeah, like that. So that's that size done. Again, same applies to the ADSL. If it was pushed right the way in, it's not gonna make a, a good contact. You see, it's not, it's not clicking into place, it just falls out. So just slide the boot back a little bit and then clip it in like that, yeah? It's still got plenty of protection because that's not, uh, you know, the strain relief boot is still doing its job. So that's the easy side done, that's the RJ45 side done. This is gonna be the RJ12 side. 
Now I've already done a video about how to make RJ an ADSL cable with RJ12s using Cat6 cables, so you can watch that, but I'm gonna quickly explain it again on this. So again, you need to cut away the outer sheath, making sure you haven't damaged any of the inside wires. Again, we're using the blue and the orange. Cut away the blue and the green. Now, because we're really gonna struggle for space on this side because it's Cat6, we need to fully get rid of this uh, plastic cross member. So what I do is I cut down at an angle to get rid of as much of it as possible, making sure you don't damage the orange or the blue wires. Doesn't matter what you do with the green and the browns because they're not used anyway. So now, because I've kind of gone down at an angle, I've taken it away as much as I can off that little plastic cross member. So then unravel it and get them in the right position. We're just gonna do an exact copy off the other side. So orange, white, blue, white, white, blue, and, uh, and orange. So roughly get them in the correct position, but we will have to check it again just before we put it in the plug. So again, white, orange, blue, white, blue, and orange. But the difference is what we have to do this side is because of that plastic cross member, it doesn't fit into the RJ12. Even though this has got a bigger entry, you're still really gonna struggle because that plastic cross member takes up a lot of room. So what you're gonna to have to do is, you're gonna to have to stretch the sheath to push it back up the wires, which will leave the plastic cross member behind and it allows you then to crush the sheath into the plug. So just grab it firmly and stretch it. I don't know if you can see that. Stretch it like so. Okay, and now you can see that the wires look much shorter. They're not shorter, it's just that the sheath has moved up. So now, I mean, you're not gonna be able to see, I don't think you're gonna be able to see in there, but the plastic cross member is, can you see in there at all? Yeah, the plastic cross member is now all the way down here. And that, that allows me to crush this sheath to fit it into the RJ12 plug. So, we're gonna do exactly the same colors as the other side. Again, cut a nice straight line, roughly, roughly leave that much wire sticking out. Now it is fiddly getting into the RJ12 plug, you probably won't do it on the first or second attempt, but you will get there, just persevere with it. Uh, again, leave slightly longer, because then when you push it in, you can push the sheath in. Uh, you want the wires, the most important thing is that the wires go to the end of the plug. Again, if it's too long, take it out and just slip another little millimeter off the wires until you get it right. If it's too short, you're gonna, uh, you're gonna struggle. Now, it needs to go in the middle four contacts. So this is a six contact plug. So pins one and six will not be used. They're gonna go in the middle four, just like the middle four of the RJ45. So make sure it goes in the middle. can be fiddly to get them in because sometimes one of them wants to go in number one or number six and at the same time you have to kind of work the sheath in. That's it. So now the sheath's a lot softer now because it hasn't got the, the plastic cross member. The plastic cross member is now here so this bit here is just pure sheath and wires just the same as Cat5e. Now if uh, I, I will say that this cable is approximately just over six millimeters, it's in between six and seven millimeters in diameter, closer to the six mil. If you're gonna use something like Cat6A cable, you're no way are you gonna get that into uh, a uh, RJ12 plug. You will get it into the RJ45, but you need the RJ12 to go into your home hub or your router. Uh, also, if you were to use external cable, external Cat6, again, no way are you gonna be able to fit it into an RJ12 plug. So uh, as you can see there, I've pushed the sheath right the way in, so it's, it's gone to the end of the little entry hole here, and yet the wires, you can probably see the copper wires have just gone to the end, let's keep that steady, the copper wires have gone to the end of the RJ12 plug. So I know the wires are now at the end, and I know my sheath has gone right the way into the cable. And because we've cut a nice straight line on the sheath, it's fully filled up the plug. It doesn't go down at an angle, so the cable grip, this is the cable grip here, that will go nicely onto the plug, onto the, uh, the plug cable grip will go nicely onto the cable. If it was at an angle, it's only gonna be part grip in the cable sheath. So it's fully on. We crimp down, like so, and then 
as you can see, it's nicely on. Allow a nice bit of room where it plugs into your home hub. Don't have it going at a right angle straight down. Allow it to come out straight and then turn around, yeah? Don't have it under strain. So always make the cable or buy the cable a little bit longer than uh, shorter. Shorter is better for the speed, but you don't want it at right angle. So always allow yourself, you know, an extra 10 centimeters or so, so it can go into the plug without straining. Now, so obviously this will go into the VDSL plate or your ADSL plate, and this side will go into your router or your home hub, the small plug there. Last thing we need to do is test the cable. Obviously you could just plug this into your equipment and you will know whether it's working or not. I've got a cheap little tester here from eBay. The RJ12s never fit that nice into the RJ45, so let's see if this is going to recognise it. It is, yeah. Okay, so as you can see, we've wired it straight, so it's going to go down because there's the middle four pins are connected, so that's three, four, five, and six. And as you see here, three, four, five, and six. So we know, let's slow it down, we know we've got continuity. One second, let's get that back through. Right, continuity, so three to three, four to four, five to five, six to six. So that's how you make a, a VDSL lead. I do sell these in my eBay shop in all different lengths from, I think it's 30 centimetres all the way up to 30 metres. Uh, the maximum recommended length is 30 metres from your master socket to your home hub or your router, so that's why I only go up to 30 metres. Uh, people have in the past asked me for longer leads and I've made them and they've worked, but you know, BT recommend 30 metres is the, the maximum length, so that's the reason I sell them up to 30 metres. So you can buy them from me or you can make them yourself. You know how to make them now. So again, you can buy the bits from me. I sell the cable, I sell the plugs, I sell the Cat6 RJ45s and the RJ12 plugs. So just to recap, if you're using Cat5e cable, you can use normal Cat5e RJ45 plugs and RJ11 plugs. But if you're using Cat6, use Cat6 RJ45 plugs and RJ12 plugs. If you need this stuff, please check out my eBay shop, which is... Uh, www.mrtelephone.co.uk and then that will link you through to my eBay shop from that website there. If you've liked the video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more videos. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye now.